welcome back in this tutorial which is part of a series where we are designing a 3 million liter per day water treatment plant in this design we are going to look at the process schematic and the hydraulic profile but before we go there let's just do a recap so our design capacity is 3000 liters per day which which is 3000 cubic meters per day which is 125 cubic meters per hour so our design flow rate that we are working with from now onwards will be working with a flow rate of 125 cubic meters per hour which means we're going to size everything that we're going to to size in this design from the flocculation tanks to the clarifier the filters and even the pipe work we are sizing all those things based on a flow rate of 125 cubic meters per hour so the flow rate is a very important parameter and also as we are going to do our calculations where we're going to calculate how much chemical are we going to be dosing into the water all that is based on the flow rate so in this video we are going to be looking at two things the process schematic for this design and also the hydraulic profile so let's start with the process schematic so basically the schematic uh, that is as shown there on the screen basically it's just a representation of the process where we show all our process units and also we can also show our chemical dosing so as you can see we start with with our water source which is the dam then from the dam we need low lift pumps or raw water pumps that will pump the water from from the dam it is then pumped to the first process unit so you're going to see when we look at the hydraulic profile all these units they should be arranged in such a way that we will pump water from from the source to the first stage of the process then from the first from the second stage the water should be flowing by gravity as you will see when we look at the hydraulic profile so from this uh the water will will be pumped from the low lift pumps to the flocculation tanks and then before it enters the flocculation tanks we dose aluminium sulfate which is a coagulant from there the water will then flow from the from the flocculation tanks to the clarifier then it goes to the rapid gravity filters and these filters they use sand as a as a filtration medium so we have a choice to either use sand only or to make it a dual filter where we have sand and other side we'll determine that later when we do the design then from the from the rapid gravity filters the water is collected and it goes into the GAC filters so the difference between these two is that the rapid gravity filters these are these are our primary filters which focus mainly on the turbidity issues then the GAC filters will focus on removal of organic compounds in the water then from the GAC filter the water will pass through UV reactors where it is disinfected using ultraviolet treatment then so that process will be our primary filtration then once that water is um, is disinfected by UV it is it then flows to the clear water tank but as it is flowing to the clear water tank we can dose sodium hypochlorite which will act as a secondary disinfection so the purpose of this dose is that is the water is being transmitted within the network it will have free residual chlorine that will make sure that the water that we've treated at the treatment plant will not be recontaminated as it is pumped into the distribution network um, so then you also see that we have got a backwash tank our filters as they are operating they will their purpose is to trap dead and any other particles so with time they will be clogged 
because they will be collecting all that dirt so there is need to clean them and we do that using a process called backwash so we pump water in the reverse direction right when a filter is working the water flows the water is introduced at the top and then it filters through through the sand and at the bottom of the filter either we can use nozzles or we can use what is called the under drain and then the water is collected into a collection chamber when you are doing backwash the backwash water will come under the nozzles or the under drain and it rises on top so that it will then be able to to carry all the dirt out of the water and that backwash can be done also at the same time using an air blower we'll see that later so for the schematic this is what we have now let's look at the hydraulic profile and see what is it all about as you can see from the title of this i've termed it the initial hydraulic profile because there are some figures which we don't have at the moment which we will have along the way as we are or as we do the design so what happens is that before you do anything as i mentioned earlier the first thing that can be done is that a topographical survey of the place is done and then from that so what the topo survey will show is that it will show the levels of the place because we will need to have the whole place surveyed out and we can have that topo survey as an autocad file where you you can open it in autocad and you'll be able even to to put your designs to take your measurements so one thing that you get from that topo survey is that it will have some some contours so um maybe as an alternative to a topo survey if you can be able to go to the place and you take some levels of the place because we need to know the elevations like for example we can look at this and look at the dam intake so at the dam the parameter that we are worried about that we need to know is the top water level and also we need to know if there are any historical records we need to know the the high flood level of the dam let's say there is a lot of rain how much the dam can fill up to what height can it do so these um these levels uh they can be done is a reference or they can be the levels above above sea level so we'll be using these levels for our design so you can see that the top water level for the dam is 20.5 meters then another thing that we will need to to know is also we are going to take our water to abstract the raw water from this dam and we're going to probably design some kind of sump which will allow the water to flow either from the dam then it flows by gravity to a sump then from that sump we put some pumps then we pump it to our process units so another parameter that we need to know is the top water level in the sump well it will be the same as the dam then another thing that we need to know is the bottom water level of the sump so from that we'll be able to know even the depth of the sump and and we need to also determine a position where our pumps will be located right then so you can see that um all the process units they are arranged hydraulically or in terms of the process heights so you see that there is the brown line which is written in gl that's for ground level well to make it simple we have got almost three processes which are at exactly the same level it's it's not usually the case unless the ground is very flat so usually 
the location of a treatment plant you can you can use or you can select a location which makes it easy to arrange all our process units such that we can have the pumps only for the first process and the rest they can be done using gravity so you can actually select um, some kind of a hill where you pump your water from the dam and the first process is probably on top of the hill then the other processes they will then be be at a lower a lower place so that water will then flow from one process to the next by gravity like in this instance we are pumping from the raw water sump into the flock tank so for the flock tank the top water level um that one it will probably be uh, determined once we design the flock tanks and determine their height so provisionally i've just put that that one point that 31.1 meters so why is this important you see that our top water level is 20.5 and our flock tank top water level is about 30.1 meters which means we have uh, around 10 meters of head so when we are sizing our pumps this is an important parameter we need to know the static head before we we look even at the frictional losses so this is why a hydraulic profile is very important even before you start your design you need to know your place and to know your levels so in this design we are going to have the flock tanks that's our first point so raw water is pumped to the flock tanks then from the flock tanks we are going to arrange the clarifier which is the second point and in this case we are assuming that both the flock tank and the clarifier they are on the same ground level so for the clarifier we introduce water to it at the bottom and then the water will then rises through the clarifier and we and if we are using some tube settlers inside those tube settlers they will be able to allow the the coagulated uh, particles to then settle because the clarifier another name of it is the sedimentation tank so the flocks formed in the flock tanks they will then settle in the sedimentation tank or into the clarifier then clarified water will flow from the top of the clarifier it will then flow to the rapid gravity filters as you can see that there is a difference in the top water level between the clarifier and the rapid gravity filters the reason is that we want the water to flow by gravity so that from the clarifier it just flows by gravity then it goes to the rapid gravity filters then from the rapid gravity filters the water is collected at the bottom so it is to flow by gravity which means the gac the top water level of the gac should be either at the same level as the outlet from the rgf or a little bit lower so that water can also flow by gravity then water from the from the gac it will then flow from the gac into the clear water tank and for that okay there has to be an elevation difference between the two which means the tank or the collection tank or the clear water tank will be the lowest process unit that we have so that the water can be flowing along the way by gravity so this will make sure that we minimize the number of pumps that we will need for this design then from the clear water tank as you can see there will be some set of pumps so these pumps they will then pump the water from the clear water tank which is in this case if you are to take that ground level of 28.2 meters um it it means that this water tank is underground and maybe maybe five meters underground so using some raw water pumps 
So we will need to know the top water level of this water tank. So when we design all the units and determine their dimensions, we'll be able to know how high is the RGF, how high is the JC. Then from there, we can determine the top water level of our tank that we need. Then from there, we can do our calculations and we can determine the bottom water level. Or we also determine at what point can our pump do the suction, our high lift pumps. So these high lift pumps, that level where they are doing the suction, we are pumping all the way to a reservoir. So usually this reservoir, it can be located maybe some kilometers away because the best or the ideal location for this if it's for a small town and if we are lucky to have maybe a mountain or a hill in that town the ideal location will be to locate this reservoir on the hill or the mountain such that we will need to only pump from the clear water tank to the reservoir and then once the water is in the reservoir from the reservoir to the distribution the water can just flow by gravity. The distribution will be adequately sized to ensure that there is enough pressure, there is enough water pressure so that it can reach every place where it is intended to reach. So this is what a hydraulic profile can look like. There are many variations to this, but in all their variations, what they are or what they seek to to show is how are these processes connected hydraulically so that we know which processes needs an additional pumps and we also know how to to place these process units one after the other at a proper elevation so that our process will then flow seamlessly so if you've got any questions regarding this you can drop them in the comment section and I'll be glad to assist you. And also, this hydraulic profile and the schematics, they will also, there will be a link for where you can actually download this, maybe in case you need to download them and to go through them. So you can check the description. There is a download link where you can download this. Right, that's all for, for this video. So in our next lesson, we are going to be looking at, at the process calcs. So these process calcs, they will, they will cover the sizing of the flock tanks, the sizing of the clarifier, sizing of the filters, sizing of the, of the storage tanks. We calculate the chemical dosing rates and so on. So subscribe, like, and share with your friends so that you won't miss this. See you.